It is the word of God. I can have what it says I can have. I can go where it says I can go. I can do what it says I can do. I can be what it says I can be. And I believe this word today will bring me closer to my destiny. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3. Thank you, choir. I want to thank Bishop James, baby D. Dukes, for standing in for us last Sunday. He snapped up in here while I was away preaching in Alabama meeting on to Atlanta. And thank you for being a kind of church that allows me to carry out the Great Commission, apostolic assignment. I miss y'all though. Hallelujah. Now, Father, we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Try this again. I got caught up before chapter 3, verse 14. For this cause I bow. My knees, or about on my knees. Tell your neighbor, say, sometimes bow. Sometimes bow. And to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm. he's the one that uh, the whole family in heaven and earth is named after him. Yes. That he would grant you according to the riches, somebody say riches, riches. of his glory to be strengthened, somebody say strengthened, strengthen. by his might, and he fills it with the Holy Ghost in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That you going to be rooted and grounded in love. That's maturity. And may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height. And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye should be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able. Somebody say able. able. To do exceeding. Somebody say exceeding. exceeding. Abundantly. Above all we ask or think, somebody holler, able, able. according to the power that worketh in us, Come on, and to him be glory by Christ Jesus through all ages without end. Amen. You may be seated. The word of the Lord is already blessed. May God be glorified. May we be edified. And may the devil be horrified. Help me preach. Ask your neighbor, say, what makes you bow? What makes you bow? Ask somebody else, say, what makes you bow? We have arrived. Chapter 3 of this book. We've been preaching all year on the riches that are available through Christ. As we celebrate our maturity, our unity, and give birth to the things that are within us. It would have been about 20, 25 years ago. I took my first trip to the Holy Land of the Jerusalem and the group was met by an agent who took us to dinner with the Prime Minister of Israel. And my grandmama said I was much obliged because I was in the company of what they call tall cotton. I had never been in such a room with such an ambiance. The orchestra was playing. There were more glasses and forks at the table than I knew what to do with. The guide said to us, prior to going to the dinner table. He said, it's the request of the prime minister that you have all of the amenities that come with this land. So even before getting to the main table, there were all sorts of wine. Some of y'all would enjoy that. Hallelujah. Come there on, were cheese on. trays, at least yes. one on us, and hors d'oeuvres and smoked fish, caviar, and all kind of meat, and escargot, better known as snails. I said to the late Reverend E.J. Jones, some might remember him from First Unity, I said, do you mean we can have anything that we could see? The late Reverend Wiley Cozy said to me, he said, Dr. Trotter, not only can you have what you see, everybody was doctor back then, but this is a land of promise, a land of milk and honey. Whatever you don't see, just ask for it and they'll get it for you. Well, I came all the way home this morning on my birthday week. That's what the Lord is saying to us concerning his riches. He says, I'm not going to only give you what you see. But whatever you don't see, I dare you to ask me for it. Woo! 
Tell somebody just ask for it. Because he said now unto him that is able to do exceeding above or abundant uh, all we can ask a thing. Uh, so it was, about, it was uh, after I'd been flying a while and I found uh, this is back before 9-11 and because I was a premier traveler, any flight over two hours, uh, somebody informed me, I think it was Noel or Bishop Morton, informed me that you don't have to eat uh, the meal that's on the plane. But you can, uh, because you're in first class, you can order uh, your meal 48 hours in advance. Somebody say, in advance. Yeah. I say, you mean I can order whatever I want to eat before the flight? They say, yes, 48 hours in advance. Somebody say, in advance. Yeah. And so I called the airline and I said, I'm going to be on flight number so-and-so, so-and-so. And they told me I could order whatever I ask. And it was a lady, uh, one of the sisters, she said, yeah, uh, yeah, Bishop, you can order anything from White Castle burgers to chicken to lobster and shrimp. You can get some gas burgers, chicken, lobster, you are not bound to eat what they have already planned on the plane. I came all the way home to tell somebody that has been walking with the Lord that you've been given access to order some stuff in advance. Can't nobody shout but me, this is my week. Tell your neighbor, say I got some stuff that I'm gonna get in advance. I'm ordering my advance healing, my advance deliverance, my advance breakthrough, my advance prosperity, my advance peace, my advance assurance, my advance health, my advance miracles, my advance finances, my advance promotion, cause now under him, Who's able? Somebody holler able to do exceeding and abundantly above all. We can ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Under him be glory by the church of Jesus Christ to uh, the world without end. I I've been talking to y'all all year from Ephesians and their nine assurance that I gave you before we left chapter one. Some of y'all should remember uh, the, the first message of the year. It was three things. I'm blessed. I'm chosen and I'm adopted yeah I'm blessed I'm chosen and I'm adopted but there are nine things I've covered over these soon to be three months he has blessed us to sit in heavenly places he's chosen us to be holy and without blame he don't see us like the world sees us he's adopted us through the process of adoption he's redeemed us through his blood he has informed us through the mystery of his will he has made us heirs of his riches he has predestinated us to greatness he sealed us to the day of redemption and while I was preaching a couple of weeks ago I got an email from heaven that was extra that the Lord said that there are some people that he's going to make an exception out of I wish I had them here today Somebody ought to tell your neighbor, I'm going to be the exception. A thousand shall fall at thy right hand and ten thousand at thy left hand, but it's not coming nigh me. These folk going to lose their house and they're going to leave their house, but I'm going to still be in my, y'all ain't hearing me. Somebody over here going to be sick under death and over there going to be in something, but God is preserving me to be the exception. Somebody shout, I'm the exception. Society has suggested to us throughout ages that this whole activity of bowing uh, Deacon Grafton is done out of respect to bow, to bend over, to stoop, to bob, to curtsy, to give obeisance to, to show some kind of kindness. It was popular in early in our church days and uh, we would have a botillion and a cotillion in the black church uh, where young men and women were taught manners of manhood and womanhood. And they were taught how to bow. They bow one to another. It doesn't happen here much in the United States, but in British countries or in Italy where I travel because of the office of bishop, people bow and uh, they kiss my ring and they refer to me as your grace. The proper uh, terminology for bishop in the English is your grace. And then uh, if you're a bishop of bishop or cardinal or presiding bishop, the proper terminology is your excellency. So they call me your grace and your excellency and they kiss the ring. They bow. Most native countries that I've been to, people bow out of respect. Uh, most cases, the women bow to the men. In Kenya, particularly in uh, Kasumu and down in Getty, the women uh, won't get off their knees until they get the man's permission after they bow. And I say, what are they doing? They say, waiting for you to pick them up. Uh, let me try. I want to try that here. See how many women I can get. I know don't you go home and try that, Freddie, because, you know, you get cussed out when them sisters say, I ain't bowing, we ain't in Africa, what's wrong with you? 